everybody, this is uh, Jim at <clears throat> FreeChartVideos.com using time honor techniques to understand modern markets. Just want to remind you that this video is for educational purposes only and it is not intended to be used as any form of investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own due diligence and make investment decisions that are suitable for your financial situation. I'm not a licensed professional, just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's look at the S&P 500 as of the close on May 20th, 2011. All right, here we go. This is the uh, S&P 500. Uh, shows the trading since uh, the, uh, roughly the middle of uh, February. Um, and this was the high set back uh, at 1344 or so. Um, then we entered this pattern that looks, I've uh, been calling this as an inverse head and shoulders. It has uh, gotten over this, uh, what what is by definition the neckline of a head and shoulders pattern. <clears throat> However, it only got over that briefly. The pullback has brought it back down uh, underneath that line. But there's also another line here that is, uh, instead of starting here at the left of the head, we back up a little bit and look at that 1344 high, which I'll remind you was the high uh, for quite some time before this dip. And what I mean is uh, we're, we're go ha we'd have to go back, what, a couple years before we find that level in the S&P. And w that created this green line over this high and over... Uh, this high right here, I'm just curious, it's kind of interesting, if, if we draw it over this little peak here, we kind of get a back test of that line, roughly, and, um, and once we broke out of this, we got a back test of this line, but then we've gotten a series of back tests, and, and it's like the, the S&P just doesn't quite want to get on up and do what this pattern says it should do. Should we take that as a warning sign? Well, uh, I, yeah, I think so. I think you need to look at this and say, well, you know, this should be going up now, but it's not. So clearly there's something else going on in the market. There's a little bit more selling pressure here than, uh, than what we have seen uh, in, t in other patterns of this type. Now, I want to show you uh, one other thing, and that is this orange line. If we go back to a two-day chart, you can see this orange line um, starting back here <clears throat> at the head of this inverse pattern. Line it up with the head of this inverse pattern. A brief... Um, violation of that line right here, then the head of the little pattern we've been looking at, and then the head of an even smaller pattern. So that would lead one to believe that it is possible that we're just in this little sideways dance until um, this line bumps us back up. No guarantees, lines are made to be broken. But so far, um, this line is held for, for over two years. Now I want to show you something here. I am looking at this on a logarithmic chart. And I do all my charting with log charts. And the reason is, well, there's two reasons. One reason is it is suggested by uh, John McGee that you use logarithmic charts. Why? Well, let me ask you this. If you buy a $200 stock and it goes up five bucks, are you going to sell it for a huge profit? Absolutely not. If you buy a one dollar stock and it goes up five bucks, are you going to sell it for a huge profit? Absolutely yes. Then why use a chart that shows a five dollar move as the same significance graphically when you're in the one dollar range as when you're in the $200 range. That makes no sense. So a logarithmic chart basically shows the same vertical distance no matter what the price of the stock is based upon the percent gain 
as opposed to just the number of dollars it has gained. The reason I bring that up is uh, one of the frequent posters to our forum, when I mentioned that the S&P is resting right at a long-term support line, he, uh, he couldn't find that. As, and it turns out he was looking at an arithmetic chart, which looks like this. Okay? So if you're looking at an, at an arithmetic chart, then you're looking at this going, man, th this, this sucker's got a long way to fall before it reaches support. When in fact, as a function of percent gain, it is at support or very near support. So which chart do you use? Well, let's look at it another way. Here's the S&P, and we are looking at a uh, chart that goes back to uh, 1962. And I want to show you that if you start back here in the 80s, you can pretty much draw a trend line that uh, shows support lasting for what, 20 something years? Okay, it's pretty easy to see that on this logarithmic chart. Additionally, when you look at the pattern that we've been in up here uh, for the past, uh, oh, for or what, about the past 11 years, it looks like, well, we just reached this peak and now it's going sideways up and down. And I know that's a big move. These are big moves, but when put in in uh, in perspective of percent gain, considering that in the 70s the S&P was in the 80s, okay, in the 70s, <laughs> it was also in the 70s, and in the 80s it was in the hundreds, and then it got up to 150, 200. Um, you can see that. Um, the significance of what's been going on here long term is not really that huge. However, if we look at it on an arithmetic scale, then, wow, that looks nuts. How do you make sense out of that? Well, for one thing, you can't get a trend line here much to speak of at all. And when you get back down into this 80s and 70s area, it's almost like you can't even see that the market did anything at all, when in fact, it did a, a good bit. So this all shows proper, uh, the proper correlation of percent gain, showing that the move from 1973 to uh, late 74 was roughly the same move in percent terms as 2000 to 2002. And from 2007 to 2009. So this big downward move here, about the same as that, about the same as that. Again, if we go back and we look at it on an arithmetic scale, we don't even see that as being anything significant when in fact it is. All right, looking now at a um, <clears throat> at a one hour chart, what I'm thinking happened and what is going on right now is that uh, there was this, this series of um, of peaks that once we got over that, you know the tendency of the market is to come back for a back test on a line of resistance that is broken and it's like the S&P wants to come down and back test this line but it's running into some interference from this uh, green line of support so let's see what happens on Monday uh, if we look at this on a 15 minute chart I don't think anything comes that much clearer and I was thinking uh, at one point that we might be seeing a small uh, a small head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders develop here. That still is a possibility. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not quite as sold on that as I was when it looked like we were going to maybe come up and, and take this line out. But definitely, 
we need to look at uh, at this um, at this purple neckline, which is the old neckline, as well as this line right here. Um, make a long story short, the S and P is going to have to <clears throat> going to have to put on a 17, 18, 20 point move to convince me that it intends to uh, to fulfill that uh, target from that inverse head and shoulders pattern. I still kind of think that when this is all said and over, uh, said and when it's all said and done and it's all over, that what has taken place between these red lines may very well end up being nothing more than a than a large, fairly large bull flag. So how long should uh, flags last? Well, according to Edwards and McGee, no more than three to four weeks. And this one is a good, uh, a, a little bit more than three weeks old. So look, that's the S&P update. I want to remind you that the uh, Dow Industrials and the NASDAQ are in pretty much the same uh, technical uh, position as the S&P. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit stronger, but roughly the same shape. Again, keep in mind this is long-term support that um, if it doesn't hold, then we need to, we need to uh, take a look back and uh, reevaluate the entire market picture, not just short-term either, because this has been long-term support. It needs to continue to be long-term support. Keep in mind, when support breaks, it, it breaks either to set up a reversal or to set up a consolidation. We have had... Um, in the S&P, we have had patterns and channels break. Remember, uh, we had uh, a, a channel. Oh, here we go. I, I just I don't need to draw the line. We had a channel going on back here through uh, through October and November. It broke down. Did it reverse and go down to set new lows? No, it broke down, went sideways to down a little bit, and then went up to make a new high. Then we had this channel right here. Break. Did it break to uh, reverse and go down and set a new low? Well, no. It, it reversed to set up what appears to be an inverse head and shoulders pattern. We have yet to get the, the, uh, to, um, to get the full intent or, the, or to experience the full implied move from that pattern. Let me move this line back where it should be. So... That is where we stand. It, in other words, uh, a, a break of, a, of an ascending channel does not mean that the, the move is dead, that the, the bull market is over. Matter of fact, I would not expect it to be based upon that alone. I would expect the market, uh, when it really does reverse, to put in a, a reversal pattern at that top. And a typical reversal pattern would be uh, a head and shoulders. If you go back to the two-day chart again, uh, we'll actually go to three days. What do we see up here at this top? We see a head and shoulders pattern. Pretty good sized one too. Uh, is, is it possible we put in one right here? It is possible, but it's not put in yet. Okay, so if this does break down, and we come down to uh, you know the mid 1200s, then rally back up to maybe 13, 15 or something like that, then start to sell back down. Then it is possible that this could end up being a little head and shoulders here. But until it is, it's not. So anyway, that's the S and P update. Thanks for watching. I didn't realize. I thought I'd paused the video there for a second. Um, please, if you get a chance, spend a little time at freechartvideos.com. I need your web traffic to keep this free. Thanks a lot.